so I'm going to talk about the value of excess supply in a spatial matching market, joint work with Mohammed Akbar Pusha and Guli and my advisor Amin Savri at Stanford. And so as the title of the talk suggests and the title of the session, this is also about matching, but specifically about spatial markets, where we have service providers and requests, both have locations, and the objective is to find close matches. So uh, obvious examples are, for example, ride hailing or matching ambulances to emergencies. Let me just specify the exact model that we are using here. And this slide is going to be dense, so, but this is all of the model, so please bear with me and ask me any questions if you have about the model. So we have a discrete time horizon, and in the beginning, there are n drivers located uniformly at random on a zero one interval. And at each di discrete time, a rider arrives, and in total, we will have m riders. Also, their location is distributed uniformly at random. And when a rider arrives, the platform can do one of the two things. It can either match the rider immediately and irrevocably, so that like both of them now disappear, or it can wait for a cost of C to match it later. And the cost of matching a rider to a driver is equal to their distance. Uh, I have to say that like we can leave some of the assumptions in this slide. So for example, the uniformity is not uh, that important, smoothness isn't enough, or uh, the arrival could be adversarial. Also, like we can have more details about the waiting cost, like it could be nonlinear, or uh, riders could depart stochastically, and you will see in a few minutes why these details don't matter for us. So the optimal algorithm in this model can be very hard in general. The optimal algorithm is go going to minimize the expected waiting cost plus the distance cost over the infinite time horizon. Because it's going to be hard because we have the question of when a rider arrives, who are we going to match it to? Is it, it should be the closer driver or like maybe I should save the closer drivers for future riders? Or uh, it's also the question of uh, when to match. Or is everything fine? <laughs> My apologies. Uh, so, can you see the slides now in the virtual room? I hope. Okay, so the optimal algorithm can be hard in general because the question of who to match and also when to match. Should I wait and batch a few riders or should I just match immediately? But here we are changing the question. Instead of analyzing the optimal algorithm, we are asking if we have the ability to have a slack supply to attract more drivers, can a myopic algorithm beat the optimal in the balanced market? So this kind of question should remind you of bullock and Emperor kind of result, or like also the same kind of question that uh, Amin and Mohammed and uh, Suraj Maladi ask in uh, optimal um, sitting in networks. So as a benchmark for optimal, we have an omniscient algorithm which is more powerful than optimal. It has perfect foresight about the future. It sees all the riders that arrive in the future and has uh, computational power to choose the best matching exposed. So it's just solving this LP and find the best matching. A few notes about this omniscient algorithm. It's of course better than optimal because of this perfect foresight, but it matches riders immediately. When a rider arrives, I know about the future so I don't have to wait. So the Waiting cost doesn't matter for the omniscient. And it's also detail free in other senses. For example, like riders could depart with some model, but it also doesn't matter for the omniscient. Let's first see how does the omniscient do in a balanced versus unbalanced market. So the first result is that like if we have equal number of riders and drivers uniformly at random, then the cost of omniscient increases with the square root n. This result has already been known in optimal transport. I'm just like translating it into our model. 
But when we have epsilon n more drivers, then the omniscient cost reduces to a constant that only depends on epsilon and not n here anymore. So from square root n, we reduced it to a constant. And to show you like how now the word looks like, let's say the real line is the total cost. Optimal in a balanced market is somewhere there, and it depends on the details of the model. Omniscient is better than optimal, but this is still square root n. And omniscient in an unbalanced market is constant, far to the left. So now, as a myopic algorithm, we choose a very simple one. It's just greedy. When a rider arrives, I match it to the closest driver. Still, for greedy, it doesn't matter that if I have waiting costs or not. It's, of course, naive and makes mistake, but we will see that it can beat omniscient in an unbalanced market. So the first result is that if we have epsilon n more drivers, then the cost of greedy is bounded by some constant times log n. So remember that omniscient was a square root n before. And now greedy in unbalanced market is log n kind of closer to the omniscient in the unbalanced market. So now maybe the next question is that, oh, epsilon n drivers is a lot to match. Can I, what can I do with sublinear? number of additional drivers. So we show that even sublinear drivers is enough to beat the square root n of the omniscient. So this is almost like n to the power uh, 83, 0.83. And with that many additional drivers, greedy is better than a square root n, which was the omniscient. So now, yeah, so this is very nice. It's still better than omniscient with the balance market. Uh, let me tell you like where our work stands with the, within the literature. It's a huge, there's a huge literature of dynamic matching and amazing works that I cannot talk about them today. But there are a few specific ones that are more related. One is the work of Bespes, Castro, and Lowell, which they um, look at a two-dimensional setting. They quantify the optimal supply, assuming that uh, the position of drivers is almost like uniformly at random as I match it, so it doesn't change with the matching algorithm. But the more related one is the work of Canorio, which I believe is going to, he's going to talk about it in more detail after me. Uh, he generalized a result to high dimensional and fully dynamic setting when like riders and drivers both can arrive. And he showed that in three of the four general models, still the excess supply is valuable. So now it was all about theory. Um, what happens with the smaller ends that are more reasonable, maybe in practice? So here I'm showing you a plot where on the x-axis I have the number of riders, and on the y-axis I'm showing you how many more, uh, what percentage of more drivers do I need so that greedy beats omniscient in the uh, balance market. So for example, for n equal to 100, only three additional drivers is fine. And for n equal to 1,000, 13 additional drivers is fine to like, for greedy to beat the omniscient. Another question that you might ask is, what if there are just a few bad matchings that makes the omniscient so uh, have a like, worse performance? What if I could, the omniscient could choose some riders not to match just with paying some penalty? So in this scenario, a rider arrives, it's fine. I will match it, a second one arrives, and I can match it. But the fourth one arrives and all the available drivers that are close to it are gone. So I pay a cost of new without matching it. And so like the omniscient job is now to like solve this optimization program with just the objective funds and just change the little bit to like pay this cost of new for unmatched riders. And um, so if we assume the cost of new is less than one over square root n, then the platform would prefer to match no rider to matching like every rider. So maybe that's not a reasonable assumption. Instead, if we assume nu is like more than a square root n, with just like a factor of delta, then uh, we show that the cost of omniscience is still more than n to the power delta. So remember that with epsilon n more drivers, uh, greedy was uh, bounded by log n. And even with like having this uh, 
ability to like not matching some riders, omniscient is doing worse in a balanced market. So before closing our talk, I would just want to like uh, give you some remarks about our work. We don't, we are not saying that uh, prediction and optimization in matching is not important. What we are saying that if we are starting with a balanced market, and if you have the ability to like uh, attract more supply, it could be reasonable to like uh, look into that because then a mo simple matching algorithm can do better for you. And um, so like I'm quoting this from the lift, which says dynamic pricing is the main technology that allows us to maintain market balance in real time. This kind of idea shouldn't be interpreted literally. And just a recap of what we talked about today. Uh, we said that a naive algorithm like greedy with a few more drivers can beat omniscient in a balanced market. So the balanced market, uh, omniscient was at least growing with the square root n, while greedy in our unbalanced market was bounded by log n. And it's nice to see what happens for greedy in high dimensional and fully dynamic settings. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. With, no, I don't think so. Uh, we don't have the lower one for it here. Great, question. just to repeat it for the virtual audience, I think the question is that uh, when we are uh, attracting more drivers, like additional drivers, there is their utility is going to decrease. So, like, are we, what, what, what can we say about it? Uh, we are kind of uh, abstracting away from that. We, do, we don't say anything about the utility of drivers, but yeah, of course, that's very important in practice. Yeah, good questions. Yeah. Uh, when I have unbalanced, uh, so omniscient solution, yeah, we had that. Uh, in an unbalanced market, omniscient was almost like constant here. Oh, right. And uh, yeah, greedy, the upper one we have for this login, I think it's still like uh, super constant, but it's not tight. Uh, so, I don't, uh, yeah, we, we, have try, we have tried, and so far we don't have any result, uh, maybe, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't know yet. While we have a moment, would you mind flipping through your first few slides of the virtual audience and see that? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my again. Oh, no worries, okay. Yeah, I think it was the model that they didn't see, where we have like initial drivers here and like riders are arri arriving, and the model can like match them or wait. Yeah, not a very important model. <laughs> just, a, just the model. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, so. for completeness and the recording. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So, you have a question. So the weighting cost apparently doesn't say the weighting here. Yeah. And it's kind of weird because optimally it's going to incur the weighting cost. Mm -hmm. How should we do that? Yeah, because so the benchmarks that we have here, yeah, both of them, are they don't yeah, they don't care about weighting cost. So like optimal is going to do worse than the ambition <coughs> than the square root n. So like whatever weighting cost you choose. I mean, it's going to be like worse than this, like a square root. And so somehow yeah. the worst case for your analysis is when the rate of the cost is zero. Yeah. In that case, the option is going to be closest to the uh, To the omniscient. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Great. Sure. Thank you. So let's thank the speaker again. Yeah?